Good morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin in Ferguson, Missouri in the United States. That's where a grand jury has reached a decision in the shooting death of unarmed black teenager Michael Brown. The group did not indict police officer Darren Wilson for shooting Brown. Now, the decision sparked violent protests in the Missouri suburb and demonstrations across the country. The jury concluded that there was insufficient probable cause to charge Wilson. The state attorney general now could still bring criminal charges against Wilson. He also faces a potential civil lawsuit and could be stripped of his pol police license. The Department of Justice could also bring a case against him for violating Brown's civil rights. Our correspondent Alexandra Hall is on the ground following the latest in Ferguson. She filed this report last night following the grand jury's decision. Well, the wait is over and the verdict is in on Monday night. County Prosecutor Bob McCulloch announced in a press conference that the grand jury has decided Officer Darren Wilson will face zero criminal charges in the fatal shooting of an unarmed black teenager, Michael Brown, here in August. Shortly after the announcement, uh, protesters in front of the Ferguson Police Station assembled, uh, calling for uh, change, saying that this isn't justice for Michael Brown. This isn't what justice looks for. Uh, shortly after that uh, a huge conflict ensued between police who were shooting canisters of tear gas. Two police or two cars were lit on fire. One of them was a police car. People were throwing projectiles uh, in many different parts of the city. Businesses went up in flames as firefighters tried to put out several different fires in different buildings. Um, meanwhile, police cars have shut off different uh, parts of the of the city of Ferguson that even residents can't even access right now. Uh, we're we're expecting that many of these protests will continue throughout the night and also in the days to come. In St. Louis, I'm Alexandra Hall for Telesur. Reports indicate that at least 12 buildings in downtown Ferguson were burned. Police in Ferguson say the protests are the worst since the shooting of Brown. More protests are expected Tuesday. Rallies were also staged in various cities across the country, including New York, Chicago, Seattle, Los Angeles, Oakland, Washington, D.C., and Boston. To Colombia now, FARC rebels have again accused the government of failing to call off the massive military operation deployed in the region where General Ruben Darío Alzalte and two others were captured. FARC leaders say their trust in the government has been affected and that warned that Alzate's release could be canceled if the government refuses to comply with the agreement for the release of the general. The rebels insist that peace talks are difficult to resume if the government continues to refuse a bilateral ceasefire. The FARC has continually so proposed a truce since 2012. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos says that peace talks will not continue until Dario Alzante is set free. And to Mexico now we go, where members from Mexico's Rural Teachers yeah, Union have blocked the entrances of the Attorney General State Office in Guerrero, demanding the recovery of 43 missing students. Following the blockade, the protesters occupied the Attorney General's office, painted the walls, and staged a rally inside the building. The teachers also demanded the release of 11 students who were arbitrarily detained in Mexico City during the massive November 20th protests. And we continue in Mexico where Senate leader Miguel Barbosa announced that lawmakers have approved an initiative to create an intergovernmental inter commission that will address the issue of violence and insecurity within the country. The new body is a, a new effort to curb the high levels of violent crime in Mexico, where an estimated 100,000 people have been killed since 2006, while over 22,000 have been disappeared. The initiative contemplates the creation of a new national police department and the possible implementation of a new criminal penal code. And now we turn to Venezuela, where government sources have revealed the success of the anti-narcotics task force this year. Authorities have confiscated over 30 tons of illegal drugs throughout the country and arrested more than 1,000 criminals. 
The progress has been achieved without the intervention of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, which was expelled from, from the country in 2005 due to its role in subversive activities against the Venezuelan government. The United Nations Ebola Emergency Response Mission, the, the United Nations Ebola Emergency Response Mission has met and said that it will not meet its December 1st target for containing the virus due to escalating numbers of cases in Sierra Leone. The mission set the goal in September of having 70% of Ebola patients under treatment and 70% of victims safely buried. The death toll in the worst Ebola epidemic on record has risen to over 5,000 and over 1,500 have been diagnosed with the disease. And we continue with the UN where the head of the organization, Ban Ki-moon, has predicted that the international momentum to recognize a Palestinian state will continue to grow. He also urges Israel and the Palestinian Authority to renew negotiations. He opened the UN celebration of the International Day of Solidarity with Palestinian people on Monday. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas acknowledged a shift in sentiment in the West. He thanked Sweden's recognition of the state of Palestine. He also praised the overwhelming support by the parliaments of Britain, Ireland and Spain. Despite months of negotiations and notable advances, Iran and six other countries have failed to meet a Monday deadline for an agreement regarding Tehran's nuclear enrichment program. Negotiations have set the new deadline for June 2015. Western officials say talks will resume in December and that they are aiming to secure an agreement by March. U.S. legislators say fresh sanctions should be imposed on Iran. Tehran has dismissed Western fears that its nuclear program might have military aims, saying it is for peaceful energy only. And we now go to the 10th day of the 22nd edition of the Central American and Caribbean Games being held in Veracruz, Mexico. Cuban athletes have excelled Monday in field hockey track shooting and weightlifting to place their national team just one gold medal away from first place. Mexico continues to hold on to a fragile first place with 72 gold, 55 silver and 72 bronze for a total of 199 medals. Cuba now has 71 gold, 42 silver, 42 bronze and a total of 155. Colombia is in third place with 51 gold, 52 silver, 49 bronze with a total of 152. And Venezuela trails in fourth place with 41 gold, 47 silver, 69 bronze. The Venezuelans have racked up a total of 157 medals. As always, we have plenty more on those stories and plenty others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English for Telesur English. I'm Cody Weddle. Hope you have a great Tuesday.